Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the eight hour gold chart in US dollars. And you can see here that it seems to be forming, reforming the pennant formation that we pointed out before. Um, you can see that the MACD is starting to reset, although it could go lower for another round, but it, it looks like it, it really wants to break out certainly before March 7th, which is the date that is set by this pennant formation. Um, now, I want you to look at the chart for Bitcoin because it's actually in a very similar type of formation. You can see this is the Bitstamp chart. This one actually has the historical information. And you can see that uh, it's it's hard to see the scale because uh, you know if you're not up close you can't really get that but you can see the scale if we go back what happened um, in the past back here in 2013 and you can see how how big of a move it was when it finally broke free. Um, where are we relatively in this sort of thing if we're talking about a formation like this? Well, we're a little bit after the turn, so we're probably around in here, maybe looking for another smackdown. But you can see here that it, it is really forming that pennant. It, it really wants to get through 500 and make a run at the old highs. Uh, if it does that, and there's a lot of things that could happen in a very dramatic fashion any type in my opinion any type of bank serious bank uh, bail-in or um, cashless society moves by the major powers could could spark that type of a move and you can see the move that it did the last time it, it broke out of the downtrend and challenged the old high um, it ran very, very dramatically. It ran fourfold from there. A fourfold move from this old high, that's going to put us around 4,500 4, per Bitcoin. So that's going to make a tenfold move from where we currently are. And that's about right because you can see back here about 120 and then about 1163, about a tenfold move on the last one. Very, very interesting that gold and Bitcoin are both forming these rising pennants right now. It's going to be interesting to see if this continues or can they pull some rabbit out of the hat to stop this progress. I think they can because they always have and I want to delve deeper into this Glencore story because I think this is a perfect example of how they manipulate things and pull these rabbits out of these hats. So if you look at the Glencore stock, this is the year to date chart of Glencore and you can see here that Glencore hit about 70 bucks close to it um, near the beginning of this year and you can see we're at 133.25. Uh, Glencore is up 3.9 percent today and pulling out to the long-term view, you can see that it's, it's nowhere near where it was, uh, and it does seem to be rolling over, but you can see how much of a move it's made from the lows. Now, I, I don't have the copper chart up here in front of me, but um, if you look at the copper chart, it really hasn't bounced that much. It's bounced just a tiny little bit, kind of like a dead cat bounce. So we certainly can't account for this move in the stock based upon a rebounding commodity prices. And certainly we're not seeing a rebound in world economies, things happening in China or the rest of the world that would account for this sort of a bounce. So how do we account for this sort of a bounce? Well, the, the main way we account for it is a bunch of financial shenanigans that are going on. Now, I wanted to cover some of these here. Uh, there's a number of stories I've got to read here. Uh, just recent stories. This one's actually from today. Franco, Nevada closes Glencore's precious metals 
stream by, uh, closes as in closing a deal. I'll read a little bit of this. Franco Nevada Corporation, FNV, declared that it has concluded the acquisition through its fully owned subsidiary, Franco Nevada Barbados Corporation, of precious metal stream called the Glencore Stream, with reference to production from the Anta. Pake Mine, and a Pake based in southern Peru, is fully owned and operated by Glencore PLC. FNB made a one-time advance payment of $500 million for the Glencore stream. Now, you remember we talked about how Glencore was forward-selling its silver. In other words, it was selling silver it, does, it doesn't even have. It was selling silver that is yet to be mined. So there's just one example of the sort of scams that the powers that be run to try to prop things up and keep things going down before their time. They're fully in control of the markets for paper assets. So they can have their friends come in and make purchases. We're going to see when we look at the zero head story here about uh, the huge scandal that Zero Hedge has caused with the Texas Fed uh, and how they exposed what they're doing. But let's look at some more Glencore stories before we get to that. So the next one, Glencore relies on trading expertise to offset mining losses. Now this is fascinating. Glencore actually controls uh, a trading desk for commodities. This is actually located in Bar, Switzerland. And uh, we'll read a little bit of this. Marketing is what Glencore does best, and the earnings stream is proven to be more resilient and far less cyclical than mining. Credit Swiss Group analysts, including Liam Fitzpatrick, who advised buying the stock, wrote in the February 25th report. So you see that? Here's another way they're propping up Glencore by uh, promoting them as a trading company rather than a mining company. And they go into the profits and uh, and if you go into detail in this article, uh, I encourage you to read the whole thing. You can see that there's really some very suspicious profits that are being earned um, on their trading desk. But so this article points out that Glencore is now accounting for about 70% of its profits by trading. So another shady deal going on. And again, this is a way that the powers that be can funnel their phony money into a uh, business that's supposedly a legitimate business, a mining business, a business that is involved with pulling raw materials out of the ground, refining them, selling them off, trying to make a profit on that. But you can see that uh, they're using underhanded and shady tricks to try to prop up that company. Now, here's the last one, and this is about Invesco. And we see that Invesco buys Glencore and BHP debt as bondholder friendliness grows. Invesco Limited, the manager of about $741 billion of assets. Now, you need to think about that. Whose assets are those? Well, that's everybody's retirement. So they're taking people's retirement and they're using it to prop up these companies that should go bankrupt. Uh, but the reason why they aren't going bankrupt is because the powers that be, uh, the Federal Reserve, the BIS, and all the rest of these folks, are not yet ready to pull the plug on this system. So you can see here, Invesco Limited, the manager about $741 billion of assets, is buying large miners' bonds as the industry cuts costs and shareholder payouts to withstand a slump in commodity prices. The fund manager will increase holdings of debt from companies such as Glencore, PLC, Rio Tinto, and BHP Bulletin to above the level recommended in its benchmark from underweight, said Lyndon Mann, a portfolio manager. Acquisitions are centered on short dated notes, including Glencore bonds maturing in less than three years and offering yields of about 5% following price declines. Quote, there has been a clear focus from the metals and mining names 
to be more bondholder friendly and undergo aggressive restructuring, said London-based man. Whilst the global growth story is weakening and impacting base metal prices, we believe that valuations are compensating for these risks, especially in high quality names. Miners have shored up balance sheets by scrapping or selling projects, halting dividends and buying back debt after a slowdown in China led to a collapse in prices for copper, iron ore and other raw materials. The moves have helped stop a rout in the industry's bonds following a 14% loss last year. So you can see, uh, and I've pointed out before, that the bonds lead the stock. We know that someone now is coming in and buying up the bonds, which is propping up the stock. And why is this happening? Well, I think the key story that, uh, well, let's look at Invesco first here. Invesco is an American independent investment management company that's headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and has branch offices in 20 countries. Invesco operates under the Invesco Trimark, Invesco Perpetual, WL Ross, and Power Shares brands. And then it goes into the history of it. But basically, uh, if you know anything about uh, ETFs, Power Shares is one of the largest. Uh, sponsors of these ETFs. You can see their Invesco power shares. So again, this is just paper propping that's going on. Uh, now, why is this going on? Well, I think the most important story to explain to you why this is going on is this story broken on Zero Hedge that uh, where Zero Hedge accused the Dallas Fed of telling banks to not mark their shale and oil loans to market. So I'll read a little bit of this and, and then sum it up here. Two weeks ago, Zero Hedge reported an exclusive story corroborated by at least two independent sources in which we informed our readers that members of the Dallas Federal Reserve had met with bank lenders with distressed loan exposure to the U.S. oil and gas sector and after parsing through the complete bank books had advised the banks to, one, not urge creditor counterparties into default, to urge asset sales instead, and three, ultimately suspend mark to market in various instances. The Dallas Fed took the opportunity to respond on Twitter when in a tersely worded statement it said the following, no truth to this zero hedge story, the Dallas Fed does not issue such guidance to banks. We thank the, federal, the Fed for answering even if its response was in itself a lie and further, since we fully understood by our story, we asked the Federal Reserve Chairman, by, chaired by Goldman Sachs veteran Robert Kaplan, to answer several follow-up questions regarding this matter, which is of significant public interest to wit. And then we have all the details here. And this is a continuing story on Zero Hedge, and they filed a Freedom of Information Act. Basically, we know what's going on behind the scenes. The Federal Reserve and the Bank of International Settlements and the Exchange Stabilization Fund, all the powers that be that are propping up a phony monetary system, are working behind the scenes to get their players to support the pillars, uh, although there are many pillars, that are collapsing. So you could imagine the analogy that I've used in the past is your uh, magician up there on the stage, or let's not say magician, but performer, who's up on the stage and he's got a whole bunch of plates uh, sitting up on these uh, poles that are spinning. And he's got 50 plates that are spinning on these poles and he's got to run around all the time and keep them spinning because they slow down and, and uh, he's got to run all over the place to keep things going lest the entire thing come collapsing down and of course uh, if one of those falls then that pole's going to fall and knock the other ones down it's going to be very similar to a domino effect or a house of cards so we've got the federal reserve in my opinion 
coming in and encouraging these companies or these insiders that they control to do things like prop up Glencore and uh, prop up all these shale oil and gas companies that really by all by all rights should go bankrupt and probably will eventually go bankrupt but uh, they're not ready to pull the plug and this this just goes to show you how much power they have behind the scenes to prop up phony paper assets until they're ready to pull the plug and we'll talk to you next time